Hello everyone, peace of Christ to all. Uh, in this video, as usual, we will listen to a Muslim and we will see his answer. Um, I don't want you to be the judge by uh, taking my side if you are a Christian or taking the side of the Muslim just because he's a Muslim. I want everybody to listen and to be honest. If you think I'm wrong, then I am wrong. If you think, uh, if you are a Muslim and you think your brother is wrong, just be honest. So we don't want people really just to take side. We, we, don't, we wouldn't play like the two party uh, Christians with Muslims. Let us do this. Let us play uh, lies with the truth. So both of us, we should go to the side of the truth. It doesn't matter really if we are Christians or Muslims, but I know Muslims will never do that usually unless they are really I don't know, maybe God touched their heart to see the truth and they decide to be honest. Now, we will listen to this uh, debate here. This is a guy, I think, that within the debate, he asked a question. And the Abdul, which is the Muslim, he called himself Sheikh. This is the debate uh, name. Uh, Sheikh uh, Imam Shahrayar Sheikh and Tariq Fatah. All right. By the way, both of them are Muslims. Don't don't think those are two, like a Christian. And both are Muslims, as I understand. Uh, but this one, uh, let us say Tariq, he's trying to present Islam in a new image, which is nothing but a fabrication. You know, he he wish he wish Islam to have different image. Uh, anyway, both of them, I believe, at the end of the day, they are nothing but liars. And I am here going to expose the ones who lie. So let us listen to the argument and we will see the answers with the proofs and reference as always. So if there is uh, an effect and there is, you know, push to the Islam, uh, what if somebody wants to change his uh, religion, will he be killed or not? Thank you. Yeah, thank, okay, you. thank you. Thank you. Okay, first let's talk about this verse and this is a very favorite verse of the Fox Television Network. Kill them wherever you find them, right? Or, or fight them until there is no oppression in the land. You know, whenever you come across verses like that, Please do a favor, okay? Read the next verse. Okay? Yes, I agree with him. You see, guys, a Muslim saying to you, please, when you see a verse like that, kill them, whatever you find them, just do me a favor. Read the second verse, and you will see the Muslims all of them, they clap. Like, as if he is like, he gave us an amazing solution to silence you. Read the next verse. Really, I'm serious. <clears throat> yeah, I'm serious too. Let us go and read it. I'm going to show everybody that you are nothing but a potato. And when a Muslim, he says, please, when somebody quotes for you a verse like this, just ask him to go and read the second verse. I'm going to read not only the second verse, the third verse, the fourth verse, whatever verses you want. Let us go to the Quran. This is the verse uh, we are talking about. All right. If we go in English, you will find this verse here. Chapter 2, verse 191. Chapter 2, verse 191. All right? So, you can choose any interpretation you want. It doesn't matter. All right? So, people will not say we are choosing. Any, anything you want. And he said, just read the verse after it. Now, how come you said just the verse after it? What about the verse after the, the, the second one? Only the verse after it? Yeah, I will show you why he said that. This is the verse 191, and he just said, read the verse after it. All right? But are you going to ask me to read the verse after this too, or only this verse? But if they cease, then Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. But what does that mean? You know, when he says this verse to you, it sounds like, you know what, if you stop attacking you or something. No. You see, read the verse after it. This is what he said, right? Advice. Please advise, guys. Read the verse after it. And fight them. Fight them until there is no more fitna. What is fitna? Let us see what is fitna. Is fitna somebody is attacking me? No. Is fitna is someone uh, uh, trying to kill me? No. Is fitna someone is, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 burning my house? No. Fitna is disbelief. And worshipping other along with Allah. This is fitna. So, 
when he say just read the verse after it he was talking about this verse only he don't want you to read the verse after it he wants you only to go in this verse to make you believe that this verse is speaking about what uh, if they seize we will stop attacking them so what sees mean like you know we stop attacking us no if they stop doing fitna which is worshiping other than Allah then you stop killing them then you stop attacking them so what is what is required here in this case that we fight them all the way until there is no more fitna you see it which means no more disbelief which means until everybody convert to Islam <laughs> all right so until there is no more disbelief and until everybody is worshiping Allah alone but if they see here we go again let there be no trunk so you see what is the what is the condition of the seas what sees mean here it's just to stop worshiping other than Allah that is the condition so please brother sisters please read the verse after it please read the sisters okay please don't uh, just read the, this verse please read the verse after it uh, okay we read the verse he wants you only to read this verse he don't want you to see this verse and actually Muhammad he came with something the Arab themselves the pagans Muhammad by the way is a pagan too you know he, he took everything the, 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 the pagans before him they worship and they believe and he added to his religion the, the Muslims, sorry, the Arab before Muhammad, all of them they agree that there's sacred month where people don't go for war. Muhammad in the beginning he agreed with it and he is the one who break it because he took advantage. Those people are relaxed right now. It is a sacred month where nobody attack anyone, so let us attack them. All right? Anyway, so the verses he's talking about obviously is a very very disgusting verses saying clearly that we Muslims we should attack anyone until he sees by doing what by stopping disbelieving in Allah if you stop disbelieving and worshiping another God than Allah then we will not kill you secondly the funny the guy did not even ask him about this verse but he is the one who mentioned it because he's a stupid fool he want to play games he said ah those people always they quote verses uh, as an example the verse chapter 2 verse 191 please please do me a favor read the verse after it and all the muslims <laughs> take me hey, Allahu Akbar. stupid people let us read the verse after it yes and the verse after it and the verse after it you see how stupid liars they are now let us continue in the video to expose more lies. Because sometimes, because what is happening is, I mean, this is what this is the happening. Sometimes it's a command on the battlefield. It means you will, when you're on the battlefield, whether whichever nationality you're from, you're not going to offer a cup of tea to the other side. It means you're going. There's no battlefield here, you idiot. What battlefield? Those are people living in the same city. Those are people who live around Muhammad. Muhammad, he sent the three letters to three kings. They never attacked him. The king of the Roman, the king of the Persian, and the king of Ethiopia. And his letter, he said, Aslim Teslam, which means convert or else. Aslim, you will be saved or else. What? He is the one who created battlefield. You see the deception? You will not offer them, brother, a cup of coffee in the battlefield? Well, who is the one attacking who? In, you made a moral decision. You know that this moral is the right decision. way to go. And then you go into the battle. You, def I mean, every day almost we, we sing the anthem, Oh Canada, we stand in guard for thee. Right? If Canada yeah, is so guys, If somebody attack Canada, we will stand in guard for it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, isn't it the Quran says, take not Christians and Jews as a friends and protectors? 
Are you against your Quran? I will give you a different verse as an example. This is chapter 4, verse number 89. And you can choose any in any translation you want. And by the way, I don't accept any translation made by Muslims because all of them, I believe strongly, uh, you know, uh, that not even one Islamic translation is accurate for a very simple reason to try to make the Quran look nice. However, if you read any translation you want, still even they to try, try to make it look nicer, you will see how filthy Islam is. And here it says, don't take don't take them friends who 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 don't take them friends who he just said we will defend Canada he just said we will defend Canada if somebody attack Canada well the Quran says you don't take friends of those who just disbelieve in Allah you don't take them as a friend until they flee in a way in the way of Allah which means from what is forbidden well in Canada they allowed everything is not allowed by Allah. So what, what do you mean you can take them as a friend and you stand and you defend uh, Canada? And not only this, and if they refuse to be fleeing away from what is forbidden by Allah, huh, then you have, you go after them and size them and slay them wherever you find them. <laughs> All right. Now he will say to you, "Well, what about you read the verse after, uh, uh, you know, uh, the verse after it? Well, let us read the verse after it. The verse after it is about those, except those who you have a treaty with them. All right. Now uh, later we will see Muhammad. He broke any treaty because he said there is no treaty with the disbelievers." So Muslims will try to say to you, you know, there's a treaty between us and a group. We will not attack them. There's no treaty in Islam. Muhammad, when he was weak, he made a treaty with the strong tribes to avoid any war with them until he's strong. And he was targeting the weak one until he is ready to go for the big one who will sign a treaty with them. And then when the treaty is over, all right, then we will go for it. And just to prove our point, here we go. We go to chapter 9, verse number 1. You will see this is declaration of a breaking any treaty we have with those who don't worship Allah. Who is the one who broke the treaty? It's Muhammad. There is no treaty. That's it. Now we are strong. Now we can kill them all. So let us go and kill them all. Now, somebody might say to me, the treaty, what the treaty is, you know. I will, I will tell you an example of treaty. Actually, he speak about it in the video. He speak about the Christians who are paying jizya as an example. This is a treaty. When the Muslims conquer your country, there's a treaty between the defeated and the winner. The defeated, they have to pay jizya. All right. And you have to be subdued. So if you break the treaty, you don't want it to pay jizya, or you don't want to be subdued to Islam, either way, or both of them, then we will slaughter you. And we can go to different verses in the Quran, like chapter 5, uh, uh, verse 51. But before we go there, I will show you more verses. Chapter 4, verse 144. Chapter 4, verse 144. You can take any translation you want, whatever you want. As I said, all of them, they are a bunch of liars. All you believe, take not. Awliya, awliya mean protector or helpers or friends. But the guy in the video, he was saying, you know, like what you offer people who they are in the battlefield, a cup of coffee, well, these people, they want to be your friends. Who is the one is teaching hate here? Who is the one is forbidding who? from being a friend to someone he is a Canadian, not a Muslim Canadian. Who? Is it the Canadian government says you should not be a Muslim, you should not be a friend to a Muslim? Or it's, it's Quran and Islam saying you cannot take friends from those who they are not Muslims. Protectors, which means any Canadian Muslim, any British Muslim, any uh, American Muslim, uh, any those are not American. Those are, they have only 
awliya, one kind of awliya, awliya have to be Muslims, which means they can be legend to the Islamic government, Muslim Khalifa, Muslim leader. They cannot be under the protectors if they are not Muslims. The protectors have to be Muslims. The helpers have to be Muslims. The friend have to be Muslims. So you cannot take any of those disbelievers as protector or helper or a friend. You should take only the believers. So Muslims have only one kind of friends, the believers. Now we can show you tons of verses. Let us show you more. This is chapter 5, <coughs> sorry, verse number 51. If you go to any translation too, you will see the same. You will see. All who you believe take not the Jews and the Christians as a friends and protectors. Who is the one who is teaching hate here? It's all over the Quran. But he just said to us, if somebody attack Canada, we will, will defend Canada. This is not about battlefield. This is about Muslims. They consider anyone is not a Muslim. He is an enemy. What it means, you cannot take them as a friend or protectors. It means they are enemies. You see, let me let me tell you something here. When I say you cannot be my protector, I'm saying you have no authority over me. I'm a Muslim. When I say I will never take you as a friend, it's mean we will never be friends. We are always going to be enemies. And that is the true faith or the true face of Islam and the true faith of the face of Islam. Islam take you no protector, which means take no government unless it's Islamic government as a protector and no friends from non-Muslims. So when, a, when an idiot, he says to me, I have like, you know, once I, uh, uh, I have a, a debate. Uh, this was like in a present. We were uh, attending a senator meeting. Uh, he said the following. Actually, this is the, this is the Facebook of this uh, idiot who claimed to be a minister and he's from Canada. Uh, I met him, all right? There was a, 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 like a political meeting and I asked questions to a senator and he said to me, uh, so, uh, you know, what, what? I don't know, I don't understand what you are saying, like, you know, and he said to me, I have Muslim friends. I said to him, Muslims have no friends. Muslims have no friends. And actually, if you go to his pictures, you will see that he's posting pictures claiming that Muhammad is a prophet, but yet they claim to be Christians. Oh, I cannot log in. All right. They claim to be Christians. If you see the pictures, if you go there, you will see he's posting pictures of Muhammad calling him a prophet Muhammad. All right. This is it's called Anabaptist Church from Canada. This is nothing but a cult. All right. Nothing but a cult. So I I uh, I ask him, what do you mean you have a Muslim friend? You see, I'm not. You are not listening to me. I said. Muslims have no friends. He said, no, 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 I have Muslim friends. I said, no, you are not listening again. Muslims have no friends. Maybe you have a friends, but doesn't mean they are considering you friend. So this is one of the idiot I met and he claimed to be a minister. And then he said to me, I start quoting for him verse from the Quran, showing him those verses. He said, oh, so you are the kind of person who divide people. You see, I am the one who divide people. By quoting for this idiot, the Quran, I am the one is dividing people. It's not it's not Islam dividing people to be to believer and disbeliever. It's not Islam who is making you uh, 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 like either a Christian or a, or or, or a, a infidel or a, a good believer Muslim and should be should be killed if you are not. It is just by quoting the Quran, I became a person who divide. Right, people. Thank you very much. That's. How come I don't divide people if I quote the Bible? I divide people only when I quote the Quran. This is a proof to us that those are false. Here we go. You see? You will see you will see how they praise Islam. They they, they make articles praise Islam. You see he's posting this article. If you read this article, you will see that this article is nothing but shish kebab full of lies about Islam. This is the video actually he's posting. All right, and this uh, and this is his video. If you watch it, you will see it's nothing but a scam.
כאן. Uh, the Christian faith in Islam and what it means for the two communities to be engaged with each other in peacemaking ways and what it means for the Christian church to be faithful to its calling in Christ um, in the engagement with, with Islam. So I'm looking forward very much to these, to these days with you. Um, several years ago, I was invited by the Muslim Student Association uh, in the United Kingdom to uh, come to the United Kingdom for six major dialogues, five in United Kingdom universities, and the first dialogue was at the central London mosque. Um, when I arrived at Heathrow Airport, I asked my hosts, why have you invited me to come? And they said, well, it's because of your books. And I'm delighted that I think two of my books will be here in Russian for use in this class. But they said, it's because of your books. Well, I said, what is it in my books that you see that has led you to invite me to come? There's many people write books. Well, they said, it's because in your books we see two things about you. First, you love and respect Muslims. And secondly, they said, you're committed to Jesus Christ. That's why we've invited you to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see? We invited you, brother, because you love Muslims and you are committed to Jesus Christ. So how, you, how a Muslim he say you love Muslims? Let us see how a Muslim he will consider you love Muslims. What, when, when the Muslim says you love Muslims, what does that mean to Muslims? Now I look for one of his books. You see, they said we invited you because of your books. Read with me, please. This is the title here. All right. Christian Muslim friend, 12 path to a relationship. Can Christians and Muslims be friends? Really friends? Even in era of intense religion conflict, David Shank say yes. In a Christian Muslim friend, Shank, etc. There are 12 ways for uh, uh, that Christians and, uh, can be uh, uh, friends with Muslims. Well, all the verses in the Quran and all the Quran saying take not Christians and Jews as a friends and you, you get someone he claimed to be Christian and he is telling us, deceiving the Christians, saying to them, we can be friends. By making a stupid book full of lies. And he will give you an amazing story of conversation he have with the Muslims. Simply he is praising Muslims. And look what he's saying. And the pastors and the imam who are working for peace. Wow, I feel like I want to cry, man. This is a lot of love there, which is nothing but a fabrication. And this is why the Muslims invited you. Because you are the path to enter, not enter faith, to enter the society and betray the society and fool the Christians. By lying to them, saying, you can be friends with Muslims. How we can be friends with Muslims? Are they going to follow your words or they will follow the, your, the, the Quran? Which one they follow? Huh? Which one they follow? Who is the liar here? How we can, you know, what happened in this world? How some? this is the problem we have in the West. We have... People who betray Christ. Those are people who betray Christ. And those are more dangerous from Muslims themselves. Like you see the society, it's called the Peace Church Philippine. Those are very dangerous more than Islam itself because those inside the Christian society, you send your child to them because you, because you think you are sending them to a Christian church, but they say to you, Islam is a good religion. Uh, and look at these articles, you know, they are, they are not against any Muslim to carry arms, but uh, they are against any Christian to carry arms. I, I debated this guy, I made a video about it before, you can watch in my videos. I said to him, did Jesus says go and buy two swords, you liar? 
why a Christian person he will not be a good person for for having arms also the Muslims can kill us and they can take our country and lay arms why we have police then this is mean Christianity is against the police so let the criminals take over take over this is this is a, those are cult those are false people they have nothing to do with the Christianity this is a church is called Anna Baptist this is a satanic disgusting cult and those people who they are inviting them and they are praising them they are nothing but potatoes either stupid ignorant or scammers I can make a book right now praising Muhammad and you will see all the Muslims will invite me not because they love Christianity because they can use me as a key to open doors to betray the society of the Christians because when you see someone he says to you I am a doctor I am a professor in a Christian college you trust him right you think he's a Christian this is a believer in Jesus why well, I should not trust him so you will not be defense that you, you won't be in the stage of defense you take whatever he's saying and you take it for granted this is why they are more dangerous than Muslims we go back to the video on the debate to expose more lies fact, we will fight we will defend the country right yeah I mean the point is read let's take it all in all in context I'm talking about the Quran the Hadith 1400 years of scholarship understanding the Quran and Hadith it is very disingenuous for anybody out there I don't care if the name is Muhammad Qutub or Sayyid Qutub or, or uh, you know uh, um, Abu Lala Maududi or anybody out there to, to, to say that oh they said this therefore you believe this no let's look at what the majority of the consensus how the ummah how this community understood Islam number one number two is will they be humbled hatta yu'tul jizyata an yadin wa hum sagirun will they be humbled of course the non-Muslims who have been defeated in battle and now they have agreed to pay jizya will be hold on hold on what defeated in battle what defeated what defeated the Muslims are the ones attacking them and now you are making them pay after they lose you take their land you occupy their land in the top of that you say you have to pay me otherwise I will kill you <laughs> what battle like did the Christians in Jerusalem they went all the way to Mecca and they threat Muhammad either you convert or we will kill you or the Muslims went all the way to Jerusalem all the way to Syria all the way to Egypt all the way to Iraq all the way even to Persia everywhere saying either you convert or we will kill you you see how filthy hypocrite they are yes you have to be humble we defeated you so according to this when we went to Iraq and we occupy Iraq we should force the Iraqi to pay us jizya you have to be humble you've been defeated you see the logic and if you disobey USA we will kill you criminal face liars look at the satanic look in their eyes you can see Satan is coming out humbled who wouldn't be the matter was taken to the battlefield and they lost they are humbled but the question here is nobody fought you you liar name for me one a Christian king he waged war in Islam just one and I'm talking before Islam started attack somebody will mention to me the crusade the crusade happened after Islam attack not before which means the crusade was a reaction not an action it was the Muslim who launched their crusade first they call it Fatah the Christian they were responsible for the attack they are not the attacker and you will see many hypocrites many stupid liars saying to you that the crusade was a bad people who is attacking everybody and they are unjust because of the liberals who attack crusade everywhere to attack Christianity the fact if not the crusade you you all of you will be Muslims by now all of Europe will be under Islam by now it is the crusade who keep you free regardless if you are an atheist or a Christian Islam never ever committed a genocide against the non-Muslim Islam never never commit genocide against the Muslims 
What about the thousands and the hundreds of Jews you killed? Actually, Islam killed more than 200 millions through history. Let us give you guys, Islam never committed genocide against non-Muslims. Let us, let us mention what Muhammad himself did. Let us read. Let us see what Muhammad did, and this is from their own resource. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. And remember, this is the Muslim point of view of the story, which means it doesn't mean really this is the truth. You know what I'm saying? This is a Muslim reporting the story for us, so don't take it for granted. When a Muslim reports the story, 99% of it must be a lie. And you know that. So, let us read together. They are saying that Bani Nadir and Bani Quraiza, they fought against the Prophet. How they fought against the Prophet? They violate their treaty. This is a Muslim point of view, all right? Let us take this as this is what happened. I'm not going to argue with it. So, they violate their treaty and they are the one who attack, according to the Muslims, which I believe is not true. Then, uh, the Prophet, he grant them peace. After, after, even after the fight. If you read the story, you will see Muhammad, he promised them, if you lay down your arm, I will not kill you. So the stupid Jews, they lay down your, their arm. This is how stupid they are. They trusted Muhammad. Then Muhammad asked one of his companions, what do you say to do to them? He said, Prophet, kill them all. So look what Muhammad he did. He killed all the men. All their men. It's, it, it doesn't say all those who fought. All the men, which mean, and actually the story, they, there's, there's many stories we can show you. Uh, he asked, he forced them to take off their clothes. And he, even a child, if he had little hair around his private part, they consider him as a man. If you have little hair growing around your private part, you are a man and they slaughter him, which means they killed everyone, even those who did not go and join the war. And he just said, Islam never commit genocide against, against anyone. And then he enslaved all the women. And he divided them between the Muslims and their children. So what is this? This is not genocide? This is not genocide? So what genocide is? And he granted safety for those who embrace Islam. So what is the problem? They are not fighting him. You need to embrace Islam. You embrace Islam, we give you safety. You see it? So if you are a Jew, if you are a Christian, if you are a Hindu, you embrace Islam, you grant us safety. If not, we will kill all the men, we will rape all the women, we will make them sex slaves, and we will take your children as slaves for us. And then he excelled all the Jews. Isn't it this is a cleansing? And actually Muhammad, he said, the Arabian and Peninsula will not have two religions. Arabian Peninsula, all of it, not only al Medina. So do you see the lies, how trashy their lies is, how low class it is? Just to make it short, Muhammad in the Hadith, he said that he been ordered to fight all mankind, all people, until there is nobody in this earth will not say that there is no God but Allah and there is no Prophet but Muhammad. And then after you say it, still you are not done. You have to start praying. And then you have to start paying. And then you have to believe in everything Muhammad he believed. And whoever does that, whoever does that, does what? Say the Shahada, establish the Salat, which means the prayer. Pay the zakat, which means money to Muhammad, because Muhammad will take from every money you, you pay for zakat, for his pocket. And they believe in everything Muhammad said. And then, if whoever does that, his life, his wealth is protected. So what is the way to protect your life? Is to do this, and this, 
and this and this so it's not enough even to say shahada no you have to say shahada converting you have to establish the salat you have to pay the zakat and you have to believe in everything and then and only then i will not kill you unless you break any of those rules except by its right which means if you break any of those rules we will kill you like an apostate This is why he's saying here, like later, they're fight, fighting, they order to fight whoever uh, withhold the zakat. It's a duty of Islam. You have to obey, otherwise we will kill you. Even if you convert to Islam, you don't pay zakat, money is very important. We will kill you. The Muslim, they will say to you, this is tax, this is false. This is false. Because big portion of this money go to the, to the Prophet. Uh, uh, this is why you see the Khalifa in Islam in his history. He have 10,000 women slaves. Like one of the Khalifa, Harun Rashid. He have 10,000 women slaves in one palace. How he can afford it? Oh, from his salary. <laughs> from the zakat, man. Right? Yeah. So, uh, let us continue with the video. So, zakat definitely is humbling. Absolutely, because now you have to pay the tax. But remember, if you have to pay the tax of uh, jizya, then Muslim also has to pay the, uh, the zakat tax, and there's no running away from it. A Muslim cannot be a Muslim one day and, and become a, you know, a, a Christian and say, hey, you know what, I can't pay the zakat anymore. Wait, so he will try to convince you now that when the Christian, they pay the jizya, this is tax. Let us show you that this is nothing but a lie. <clears throat> If the zakat is tax and the jizya is tax, so why you call it zakat for Muslims and jizya for Christians? It should be the same name. Correct? Like, do we have do, do we have a, a, a special word for non-Christians in USA or in Canada when they pay tax? Like, do the Muslims in USA file jizya and the Christians they file zakat? You see the hypocrisy. If you go to the word, if you go to the interpretation of the verse, you will see the following. This is the Muslim website, as you see in the front of your eyes. And this is Ibn Kathir uh, interpretation, which is not accurate, by the way, in, in the English. <coughs> the English translation of Ibn Kathir is nothing but a diet. It's a very tiny uh, book compared to the actual books. Because the Muslim, they decide to take everything will make Islam look ugly. However, after all the try, still Ibn Kathir exposing Islam. If you read with me here, it says that you have to fight, fight those who don't believe in Allah. Like this guy, he said, those people, they lost with you in the fight, right? But if you read with me, you will see it says that fight those who believe uh, uh, not in Islam. And because they, because they don't believe in Islam, this is verse number 29, 28 now. Uh, in the verse number 29, fight against those who believe not in Islam. So what a Muslim says, well, Islam, you know, if you go in war with Islam, we will fight you. But they will not tell you that it is Islam is the one going in war with you. It's not the opposite. The Quran is saying clearly, fight those who don't believe <clears throat> in Allah or the last day or forbid what is etc this is exactly the same as the hadith we quote for you Muhammad he said I've been ordered to fight all mankind until they, they say there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the Abdul and then if they pay zakat and do the salat and then and only then we will not kill them it's exactly the same but this is now a verse in the Quran now those <coughs> who Muslim they fight them from the people of the book, which means the Christian and the Jews specifically. All right? You fight them because they did not acknowledge the religion of the truth. Among those people who they are the Christians. So the Christian refused to acknowledge the book of the truth, which is Islam, supposedly. So you fight them, which means you kill them. Or, if they agree to pay jizya, We will not kill them. And the jizya have to be 
paid with the humiliation and subdued. Now he said to us, <clears throat> Oh, you have to be humble. Isn't about to be humble. What humble? What humble? Let us read the interpretation and see together how Muslims lie about their Quran. We flip the page and we will see the following. As you read with me. Look what the <clears throat> what the real definition of being subdued and paying jizya is in Islam. Order to fight people of the scripture until they give the jizya or they convert. <clears throat> All right. So either you convert or you pay. So who is the one who is doing the aggression? It's not the people of the book, which means the Christian and the Jews, is attacking Muhammad saying to him, either you convert or you pay. It is the Muslim doing the opposite. Right? It's the Muslims saying, you either you convert or we kill you. If we go down, you will see here it's saying, <coughs> paying the jizya is a sign of kufr and disgrace, which means when you pay jizya, it means you must be a kafir, filthy, and you should be disgraced. And why they are paying jizya? This is a penalty. In Arabic, the word jizya is coming from the word jaza, which means penalty. Until uh, either you convert, or then you will not pay jizya. So, until they pay the jizya. So, you fight them until they pay. If they pay, we will not kill you. And by the way, this is a choice, <coughs> which means if you pay before we launch war against you, then we can, uh, we can accept the jizya as a solution. But if the leader, he insists, let us kill them all, it's up to him. Like uh, uh, ISIS, sometimes they say, uh, let us force them to pay the jizya when they want, and uh, if, if they need money, if they have too much money, they say, kill them. And why they are paying? Because they refuse to embrace Islam, as you see. So this is not a tax, as he said. Why you want to pay special tax for refusing to embrace Islam? That's very funny and very stupid. So it's a lie. Then he explained to us what it means to be subdued with willing submission. This is for translation, by the way. And yet in Waham Sagirun, it's you, like you have no choice to, to pay or not, but you have to come like a puppy. This is why it says here, and feel themselves subdued, disgraced, humiliated. Therefore, Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of Dimma, which means the Christians, Dimma here, Christians and Jews. Or elevate them above Muslims. So this is not only about paying money to the Muslims. This is about being not even a citizen. You are no one. You are like a slave. Nobody is allowed to respect you. If a Muslim he did not humiliate you, he will be humiliated himself. If a Muslim did not treat you with dis disgrace and disrespect, he is not a Muslim. A Muslim cannot elevate them ab above the Muslims. For you are miserable, disgraced, humiliated. And this is what Muhammad said. Look. Muhammad, he said, remember, this is Muhammad saying, huh? and not me. All right? Read with me. Abu Huraira reported that the Prophet said, who said that? The Prophet. Don't initiate salam to the Jewish and the Christians. And if you force, if you meet them in the in the narrow alley, or, uh, in the street, force them to the most narrow alley, which means, in the old days, they used to have an open sewage. Open sewage in the side of the street. Where the dirty water run. So, if you see a Christian or a Jew in the street, first, you are not allowed to say to him, hello, or peace, or hi. And instead, you have to humiliate him, and you have to force him to jump in the sewage. This is not about tax. This is about humiliation, so you can force them to convert to Islam. And this is what happened. When they occupy Egypt, the number of Muslims who came to Egypt is very little. But in a very fast time, they were able to force people to convert to Islam, because who want to live like this? Just because you are a Christian, they force you to go in the, in the sewage. So the ones who stayed as a Christians is the one who would have a very strong faith. The lousy one, they decide to convert to Islam to avoid this humiliation. And you can see here, this is why Umar al-Khattar, he put those conditions on the Christians when he occupied Jerusalem. 
You can go and read the treaty of Omar and see how filthy it is. The army of Muslims, they surround Jerusalem. And then the Christians, they have no choice except to accept the conditions which is paying the jizya. And not only jizya, he said to them, even you don't, you have to shave your hair, you have to carry a certain kind of weight in you, you have to wear certain clothes, you have to be humiliated. A Muslim man, he can sleep in your house three days and three, three nights, anytime he wants. Imagine a Muslim can come to your door and he knock at your door. You have to open right away and he can sit in your house, sleep and eat and maybe fornicate with your wife for three days, three nights and you have no right to say no. That is Islam. Let us go to the last lie this guy he have in this video. I've changed my religion, which kind of relates to the, to the idea of apostasy. You know, why this, this rule was originally there. But there are many, many scholars about apostasy, the scholarly views about apostasy. And of course, there's a lot of difference of opinion on it. We have traditional scholars that are saying that, uh, like Sufyan al-Sawri, like Ibn Taymiyyah, like Surahsi of, uh, yeah, of uh, the, uh, Hunaf, uh, the Ahnaf of the school of Banu Hanifa, that are saying that, you know, this was never meant to be. The, the punishment of death for apostasy was never there. You know, I challenged this slide to show me where he got this from. Ibn Taymiyyah, he said, it's never been meant to be about apostasy, to be killed. Let us go and seek some reference and see how we can expose this liar. This is uh, islamweb.net and this is a fatwa. And the fatwa number is 73924. Those who speak Arabic, they can see why it says, they are saying right away, yes, it's, it's proven that the Prophet said that there's no man can be killed or should be killed if he's a Muslim unless adultery, a marriage for a, like a, 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 an adulterer he's married and killing for killing and the one who took who, who, who left Islam and they are confirming that and not only that they are saying that Ibn Taymiyyah he confirmed that too Ibn Taymiyyah he said uh, some they say you have to give him three days before you kill him all right to give him a chance to re repent and come back to Islam Ibn Taymiyyah saying, we should not make it three days as long we hope that he might come back. So like we take him, we jail him, and we if, 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 if we need four time, four, four days, five days, maybe, you know, but should not be just three days. If he convert, if he accept Islam, then we will not kill him. But if he don't, then we have to kill him. And he's saying, this guy, he said, according to the majority of Muslims, here we go, it says, According to the majority of Muslims, anyone who leave Islam, he had to be killed. And this is included in Taymiyyah. The one he, he mentioned. Alright. Now, I found a different website in English. Alright. This one is in English. So you guys, you can understand perfectly what it says. Here is the question, you can read it, and the answer is very clear, that yes, according to Islam, anyone who leaves Islam, the punishment should be, uh, should be killed, alright? Uh, even Allah, he says it clearly, the rule of the Muslims, that an owner, that the one who leaves Islam, or the others who are not Muslims, they should be humiliated because, uh, of, uh, because of it ref for refusing to embrace Islam. So Allah will, uh, 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 he's encouraged the Muslim to go and fight because he want to give them the upper hand over the enemies who they are not, they are enemies just because they refuse Islam. And because of they are refusing Islam, we will humiliate them and we will make them, uh, uh, you know, like our slaves. However, after you convert to Islam, you cannot leave Islam. Because if you leave Islam, here we go, regarding your question, he's saying to him, I find it difficult how a man can be sentenced to death for speaking for speaking which means he said I don't want to believe in Islam I would have thought that was a human do not have the right uh, to make those decisions only God can 
only God can. So, uh, the Muslim is answering, this is the Muslim Sheikh, by the way, this is a scholar. What you're saying is correct, because no one has the right to condemn other person to death without evidence from the book of Allah, you see? So he's saying to you, yes, it's not the man who is condemning them, it is Allah. So we do it because we have, <coughs> if we have evidence against you, go with the book, then we will kill you. Evidence from the book and from the sunnah, which means the hadith and what Muhammad did. Uh, <coughs> all the khalifa, including Ali, they burn people alive for apostasy or for worshipping someone beside Allah. Here we will see, he is giving you the conditions, how to find out who is a Muslim uh, apostate. Then at the end he will say to him, you know, what is the ruling of apostate? If a Muslim apostate and meet the conditions of apostasy, if he found uh, he is uh, his sound mind of mind, an adult and and does that in his own free will, then his blood may be shed for with with, with impunity. So uh, he would be executed by Muslims ruler, all right, or the judge. So obviously this guy is saying to us is nothing but a lie. A Muslim he will be executed right away and he will not even they will not pray on him no funeral will be done for him even, even a funeral even a funeral and he will not be buried with Muslims for his filthy so they will throw you like they will throw you in the in the in the desert like a dog they will not even bury you that is Islam this is the religion of mercy and this is the religion of belief. And Muhammad, he said it clearly, whoever changed his religion, kill him. All right? Here we go. He's showing you actually the hadith in the front of you. The evidence of apostasy to be executed is the following. And remember, this is the Muslims quoting for us, not me. Whoever changed his religion, execute him. But in the video he starts saying some they say, some they didn't say, some blah 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 blah. I you know this is unbelievable how much Muslims they lie. The video became so long, but I had to, to expose this liar. Please share it, download it, feel free to post it wherever you want. And uh, if you're really interested to know Islam the way it is, then I advise you to read my books, which is full of knowledge truthful knowledge no fabrication I don't take a side when I you know I just say things as it is and uh, you will find not even one phrase in my book it, it is coming without proof and reference from Islamic books I don't have an opinion there I have proofs it's a books of proofs so I advise you to read my books the deception of Allah and if you are interested to refute the Muslims regarding their science you can read my other book it's called Quran and Science in Depth. You can search it in uh, uh, in uh, Amazon. Uh, it comes with Kindle and paper, but uh, for some reason it's coming in two pages. So either this book, The Deception of Allah, uh, and actually both they complete each other. But you know, uh, let us say this one give you all the base about Islam, and this one complete the mission to understand a lot of funny, stupid things Islam has. Muslims they claim it's a miracle when the fact it is nothing but a joke. So I advise you to read it and share it with your friends and your family because the best way to fight ignorance is education. All right? And my third book, I hope, is going to come soon out. So thank you very much for watching. Share the video and God bless.